Hi, this is Craig and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. If you've been watching the channel, you know I'm about to embark on a 10,000 nautical mile sailing voyage from Cape Town, South Africa, across the South Atlantic, over the equator for the very first time, through the Caribbean, all the way to the United States. It is going to be epic, no doubt. A special shout out to my patrons that have been around since the beginning of the channel. Love you guys. I also have some sponsors for this voyage that made it possible for me to fly halfway around the world to go sailing. Thanks a ton. Now, I have to get from Canada where I live to Cape Town, so this first inaugural episode is going to show a little bit of the battle it took for me to wedge myself into an economy seat for 26 hours, all the while having some people sleeping on me just to get to Cape Town. And I thought I was in a time crunch. I thought we'd be leaving two days after I got there. So as much as I love the Exquisite X5, it's probably a little bit out of our price range. So while we were here, we wanted to do one factory tour of a boat builder called Maverick. There's a Maverick 440 that's probably a little bit more to our price range. So I got an opportunity to do that right out of the gate as soon as I got off the plane. Rudy, the owner of Maverick, was very gracious not only to bring me through this factory tour on their day off, but he also let me be a tourist, drove me around, showed me a bit of Cape Town, and I thought that was great because I thought I had two days in Cape Town. So I squeezed in this factory tour you're going to see in this episode, and then two days later I filmed the factory tour at Phoenix Marine where the Exquisite X5 is built. That was super impressive. Still love that boat. Still can't afford it, but still love that boat. But then we got stranded here in Cape Town for way longer than we're supposed to be here. You'll get those reasons in future episodes. But that allowed me to be super tourist. And I did all the things that anybody would ever want to do in Cape Town. I went to the top of Table Mountain. I saw penguins. I saw monkeys. We're going on a safari. Cool stuff all coming in future episodes. Of course, the sailing journey when we finally get going. That's coming up too. So hopefully you're looking forward to all that. Subscribe to the channel and let's get on with this episode, shall we? We anchor and hoist the sail. Hello, people. This is the big day. I'm leaving you. For a long time. For eight weeks. It's the longest we've ever been apart by far. Last time, how long was it? Five weeks? I think okay. four or five weeks, my last transatlantic. And that's because I took a, a, a tour with a guy named Dan, one of the crew up Spain for a bit. But the actual voyage was three weeks, right? 22 days. Yeah, th three weeks <laughs> and a day. So this one's going to be eight weeks. And I'm pretty much not um, seeing Cape Town at all. No. No, I'm just getting there, literally doing a couple factory tours, getting on the boat and go. On the Sunday. Yeah, it's one day we don't have anything. So, I'm not going to have you with me. Super lonely. It's going to be super lonely. Except for I'll bring the camera, of course, and I'll talk to the camera like a crazy person, which will make me feel less lonely. Yeah, maybe I'll film things I do, maybe. With my phone. <laughs> That's all I got. Yeah, she's going camping and a bunch of other fun things while I'm gone, so she won't be bored. No, I would go if I could, but I can't. Yeah. That's a lot of... Too lot much of... vacation, I don't have that much. I'd have to ask for an advance and vacation leave and, and then get none next year, so... Yeah. I don't know if that works. It's finally hitting me today. I think today was the first day. I'm like, eight weeks apart? Oh, the longest we'll ever be apart. And this is the longest, by far, airline flight I've ever been on where I didn't know somebody. So this is step one. We're in the actual the train station. I don't know if you can see the train back there that's a via train that's canadian train uh, for some reason klm the bus i got to get on to get to montreal where i catch a klm flight is uh, at the train station instead of at the bus station it's not boat front. Yeah. step two i have all my gear let me bring you over here all my gear just jam packed i've got of course my cruising off duty suitcase the big huge massive backpack i worked out perfectly this weighs 50 pounds which is the max this weighs I think 33, 33, and then I have my little sling bag. So I'm jam packed with electronics, camera gear. Yeah. So the purse is mine. <laughs> yeah, that, that uh, coral purse, not mine. So. Who's Janice? And here comes the KLM bus. It's funny, she can barely see me through the tinted window, so we have to text each other to say that she's she's looking at the right window. <laughs> I made it through security at Montreal. I love this airport. It's so much better than the Toronto International Airport. You fly through security really, really fast. They have a lot of security wickets. And uh, KLM even let me take my big, massive backpack full of camera gear in. They said as long as it fits within the slot of uh, carry-on, they don't care how tall it is, which is news for anybody out there. They didn't care how tall it was, as long as it wasn't thicker than a carry-on. So that is awesome news. I know a lot of viewers were saying there's no way you're gonna get that through as a carry-on, but yeah, 33 pounds of camera gear in a backpack and it, and it counts. So good news, just waiting to uh, board my KLM plate. I'm on the plane and so far, nobody beside me. I 
made it to the Amsterdam airport. It's quite impressive. It's nice. And everything's in English. I didn't expect that. I expected it to be in Dutch. No, all the stores have English names. All the signs have English on it. It's very easy to get around. Leave in about an hour and a half for uh, Cape Town. Flight was good. There was one baby, one row behind me, but with my earphones on, I, I didn't hear a thing with the hum of the plane. So, all good. The guy beside me slept, uh, slept on me, leaned on me while he fell asleep for a while. But yeah, again, not the end of the world. So, so far so good. The plane from Cape Town to South Africa. So far again, nobody's sitting beside me, but yeah, I'm getting my hopes up. We'll see. But I need to get more sleep on this flight. I got some on the last flight, but I need to get more this flight for sure, so I feel somewhat rested when I get there. Wish me luck. Okay, here I am. As you can see the elephant in the background, I am in South Africa. So it was an awesome trip. 26 hours on a plane is a long time to be on a plane, but both flights were smooth. I got to sleep on both of them. I'm surprised I'm not a pretty late sleeper. I guess the hum of the plane just allowed me to fall asleep. Got my luggage, they didn't lose it. I was able to keep this massive backpack as carry-on, so everything worked out perfectly. Now I just gotta go find Rudy, one of the uh, owners of Maverick, and he's gonna drive me to his house. Rudy met me at the airport. This is Rudy and Deslin. <laughs> they are the owners of Maverick catamarans that you know we like so much. And tomorrow, Rudy told me we're going to go see a catamaran that one of his uh, new owners has. And he goes racing on it. So we're going to check that boat out. And then right after that, we're going to go to their factory. Day one of getting here, that's the first challenge. And I made it. <laughs> and uh, everything went well. So tomorrow is going to be the Maverick factory tour. So stay tuned and uh, ciao for now. The first thing Rudy did was take me to the Royal Cape Yacht Club so we could have breakfast with one of his owners that were there. Now, the original intention was maybe for me to go out for a quick test sail, but unfortunately, they'd made plans to go out with friends uh, for a long weekend, and they were just heading out, so we had time to interview them quickly about their experience owning a Maverick 440. Now, I got to speak to them briefly about their experience, which was great, but I didn't get to really take a tour of their boat. If you want a very detailed tour at the last Annapolis Sailboat Show, look for the Maverick 440 tour, where a guy named Robert Shearing, who knows tons about the boat, does an amazing tour of the boat from top to bottom. Check that out. Go back and check that episode if you want a lot of knowledge about this boat and why we love it so much. Let's get on to the interview. Okay, welcome to Cruising Off Duty. This is day one, full day in Cape Town. I'm about to uh, introduce you to Yannick. He's the owner of this Maverick 440 that I just walked around on. This is one of our favorite boats in the price range that Janice and I can probably afford. Not the exquisite I'm about to do that eight week passage on. It's a beautiful boat, don't get me wrong, but way out of our price range. We love this boat. Hi Yannick. Hi, good day. So you've had this boat for how long? Uh, it was launched in October 2017. Okay. So it's roughly a year and a half, just over there. And that. you've done coastal cruising up to this point? Basically, our coastal cruising. Uh, we'd like to sort of next year this time do a little trip up the Mozambique Channel around to Madagascar, uh, Comoros, Tanzania, and back down the east coast of Africa to Cape Town. Awesome. as a, a little bit of a practice and exercise before doing the big passage uh, across the Atlantic. And that's your plan is after you've done this kind of the sort of around the area sort of you're going yeah. to then go across the Atlantic and do up the Caribbean? Yeah that's that's the first step to go to the Caribbean right. and spend some time there and then from there we'll see where the wind takes us yeah and that's just awesome. keep going and that's the plan and hopefully it will come out. That's great right now you're still working that's why you're still coastal cruising but yeah that's great too. and yeah, then so. you're, you're making plans to transition to full-time cruising? That's that's the plan, yeah, awesome. to try and sort of transition, keep the business, get it running, and then go off and, and do the sailing. So. so in the almost three years you've had it, you've, you've, you've loved the boat, you've liked the boat? With any loved it. Um, you know, you often sit and think, you know, what would I have changed, what would I have done different, etc. It's, it's difficult to come up with something. Um, right. And that's the beauty about this boat, is that you can customize it to, to what you want, to your needs, you can choose the finishes. So there, there's so many things that you can do, so by the time you're finished with a boat, it's really something that you wanted. It's awesome. It's not just off the book or catalog type of thing, so it's, it's really, really nice. Place. It's always great to speak to an actual owner. Because yeah. Janice and I, as you've, you know, if you've watched the channel, we're at these boat shows where we're usually talking to somebody who's in kind of in charge of sales of the boat. So that's when they great. say it's, well kitted out for cruising and all that. It's 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 their perspective. It's always good to speak to a real yeah, owner. That's right. And I appreciate that. You're about to go out on a 
on a, a race with this boat too. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a cruising fun race. It's, right. it's what yeah, we call the Hot Bay Raid. We're going to go from here yeah, and literally raid the Hot Bay Yacht Club and uh, have a festive sort of bride there this night and. Um, there's live music and entertainment, right. so it's going to be great fun. And you and your wife sail this, just the two of you, you can do that quite easily? Yeah, very yeah. easily. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Even single-handedly, very easily. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so we're going to do it, yeah. Does the what? Does Liesl want to be on camera? No, Liesl will say hello. <laughs> okay, I <laughs> won't. <laughs> it's good to know you can sail it with just the two of you. Yeah. Thank you for your time, and uh, we'll get off your boat so you can go do this race. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's a good thing about a catamaran when you have two engines, you can almost spin your uh, boat on a dime in its own radius you can just spin it around they don't have a lot of space between this brand new leopard that's sticking out and the boat's across that would be a tough go in a windy day in a monohull but in a cat no problem good luck in the race thank you bye so Rudy, just explain what we're watching there. That that's that's put on by the by the club. Yeah, this is the this is the sailing academy. Uh, this is all youngsters that were previously disadvantaged, that now are being given the opportunity to be taught to get into sailing. Uh, just something lovely that the club does to give back to society. That's great. And with that, we left the Royal Cape Yacht Club. This is more of a club atmosphere where everybody knows everyone. You can have breakfast in the club, all that. The Exquisite was actually at the V&A waterfront, which is more of a marina. There was not really a clubhouse or anything like that. So keep that in mind if you want to leave your boat in Cape Town. You have those two options. This is my first full day in Cape Town, and this is Rudy. Rudy was the owner of Maverick Yachts. This is the Maverick production facilities. That's correct. And you're going to take us through and show us where it's done, yeah. where the magic is. Magic happens. But it's Saturday today, so there's yes. no staff. No staff, so it's going to be very quiet inside. So let's okay. go check it out. Can you tell them that story, because that's an interesting story. So this couple built, bought the boat with the intention of just sailing into the Caribbean and staying there, yeah. right? Yeah. So they bought the boat. They actually, it's a big passage that did the same passage we're about to do. So from Cape Town to the Caribbean, they did on their own, just the two of them, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so this was Maverick number 16. Okay. Uh, the boat's name was Air Power. Uh, both the owners were both ex-military, U.S. military. Right. Uh, they bought. They knew when they were retiring. Right. Ordered the boat before, so the boat had to be finished and ready when they retired. Okay. Collected the boat here, sailed it to the Annapolis Boat Show, from Annapolis Boat Show down to the Miami Boat Show, and then the next year also back to Annapolis. At the Annapolis Boat Show, there was a free breakfast with a world arc. <laughs> so they went and had the free breakfast, and at that breakfast they decided let's sail around the world so boat was inspected they were uh, qualified and, and checked that they were okay right. and that's where it started so they continued around the world and that's and that, around the world or not just the transatlantic or around no the world around the world they went wow. through Panama all across the Pacific and they arrived back in Cape Town the 26th of November that's and they amazing. left well that was 2018 and they left on the 15th of July 2016. So that was the first Maverick that really circumnavigated. Full, and they did it quick. That's fast. Yeah. And, yeah. and they are already back in Florida. There we go. Yeah. And they love their boat, obviously. Yeah. Treasure Island. And you told me when they got to Cape Town, they didn't even really need any rework. No, the boat, was, the boat looked like it left the factory last month. It was, <laughs> like, it was so good. And really. as, as a thank you, they, they, they brought you this ARC flag back. That's awesome. And they even signed it. That's an interesting story, and it definitely shows the, the quality of the workmanship, that they can take a boat and really kind of punish it. Like all that sailing across the Atlantic to the Annapolis, then to Miami, back to Annapolis, and around the world, and mm -hmm. like you said, the boat's still in fine shape. So, mm -hmm. right. so Craig, when we, when we start the build, uh, this is the main mold, the okay. bridge deck with the inner hulls. Right. Uh, yeah, you can see that we've got a big charm, uh, because uh, the boat is so flat, and uh, it sort of nearly planes on the water. You get boats that are, are very narrow uh, and therefore much faster but can't take as much payload as what we can. Mm -hmm. um, with the flatter hulls we can take more um, payload. For every 246 kilograms we go down 10 millimeters. Oh that's nice. Okay. So Many, that's good for a liveaboard boat because you get that, a lot of that, stuff. That right? is so that we could load all this extra uh, provisions on board. And then the outer hull with the deck uh, that will be laid up in the uh, 90 degree uh, that way um, position. Once they are laid up, 
put together and we actually bolt it together and then start laminating the two parts or the three parts with that one together. Mm -hmm. And if we now look behind you, the boat just behind you, that join is all the way down here. We have to do a bit of a gel coat repair to actually get the smooth surface like this, but it is extremely strong. Right. That part of the boat is solid. There's right. no foam in that area. So you okay. could actually take the boat onto a sandbank and actually uh, dry it out, clean the boat uh, accidentally when you uh, miss the tides. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Something else, while I'm about that, the, the keel that is under here is a sacrificial keel. Okay. That is actually glued and bonded on afterwards. So we have just bonded this on last week. Okay. Uh, we use a product called Crestima. So if an uh, owner does go over a reef, no problem. It doesn't uh, affect the integrity of the boat. You won't take on water. Uh, that might come off, but you won't take on uh, water. Grind it off, cut yeah. it off, yeah. you'll send you a new one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Okay. That's a nice feature. The, the resin that we use is Scott Bader. Um, uh, it's a, a crystic. A polyester based resin okay. um, it's Lloyd's approved uh, although it's made here in Hammersdale in South Africa okay the very next big mold the coat roof actually goes on top uh, when we designed the boat from the plans we had this done on a five axis CNC machine so we know that the designer only designed the one side and said copy paste reverse to the other side okay okay so by doing that we had a perfect balanced boat. We know port is equal to starboard. Uh, it was done on the CNC machine and we had this one big uh, blob of foam cut exactly into the shape and that's where we made the mold from. Okay. Very happy with this. Cost a lot of, it was very expensive uh, to do it that way, but very, very happy. It's dusty now. Oh, I won't go ahead. But, but you'd rather from, yeah. leave the dust than uh, try and clean it in between. Right. You, you'll see a number of uh, our molds, the bunk molds, the port heads, the, the saloon, the uh, extra cockpit. We have just demolded the new bimini. We had a, a, a smaller bimini, uh, now have one that's wider, higher, more protection, and uh, this will be the fourth boat that has the new, the new, style. The new, new style. And here it is. So it comes in a few parts. We've got the, the top. Uh, the bottom, uh, the windscreen that goes together. But on, with the new uh, Bimini, we can have a, a main sheet track or we can have the normal wishbone system. And there's now really much more space for solar panels on top. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. The foam core that we use in the boat, this is not a balsa built boat. We built one of the boats with balsa, but all the other boats are used with the Vinicel or core cell foam. Um, uh, which gives us the strength but also saves us the weight right yeah i recall you coming to the one annapolis boat show and you and your wife like the the carpentry the, the, the real wood yeah. and whatever yeah. uh, this is the the wood shop uh this boat that we're building at the moment is maple so you being canadian it's, yeah that's your your, your wood is here um the boat we saw two two shows ago was the dark cherry. Yes. Yeah, we like that one as well. That's, yeah, yeah. And then after that, we we've done maple, we've done cherry, uh, we've done African mahogany, we've done a lot of oak. Uh, we're very happy that the people in the, this this owners have have chosen the maple. Maple is a lovely wood, lovely to work with, warm, um, and it's going to be absolutely stunning. It is. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we've got it's a team. Of, we've got a team of four carpenters, of which the lead carpenter is a lady. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, as you know, it's Saturday that she's not here. But uh, the the quality of work that these four staff do for us is superb. Yeah. we are really, it's really very proud very of proud of the work. So what you're seeing here at the moment, some of the profiles uh, that's already been cut uh, and prepared uh, to actually build the lockers. Okay. Uh, and we'll get to those now. What you what you're seeing here. This is a bunk fiddle that goes in front of the bunk to keep the mattress on the bed. Right. Okay. This here is manufactured uh, from layers and layers and layers of veneer that we actually put in a mold and, and glue it together. Yeah. Okay. So there's, um, I think, 42 pages of veneer glued together that becomes one solid piece again. This is the spray booth. And uh, these are some of the um, door frames uh, that has been completed and now uh, will receive a sanding sealer. 
the sanding sealer will be sanded down right. and after that multiple layers of, of varnish. Uh, we always give the customer the option of either a mat, a gloss or something in between like a satin. Right. Uh, this one will be a, a gloss, gloss bow. Yeah, You're not only beautiful woodwork but the rounded edges. We love the rounded edges because yeah. most boats nowadays, A, they're not real wood, B, they got very you know, sharp edges on them and we yeah. love that. I'll show you some of the things that's already, it's a bit dark, I don't know if you can see, but there's the round edges. Uh, these are some that's busy, well, they are dry now, right. uh, but will be sanded down and, and done again. Uh, there, there you can see the absolute ma maple and there's a little bit of a, a tiger's eye that you can see uh, with, within the wood. It, it takes mm -hmm. on a, a different dimension when yeah, you have a you look at it. Yeah, you see it changing as you change the angle. That's beautiful. Well, at least with the human eye. I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but yeah. it's very, very nice. One of the, the reasons that we reviewed the Maverick, we were really impressed because it's very rare in this day and age that people want to use real wood. Everybody wants to go to the, the laminate faux wood, you know, that's almost like a picture of wood on top of a... People live on board mm -hmm. and we try and make multi-purpose things. This here, this happens to be uh, the port forward cabin that has two bunks and opens up into a single bunk. Okay. This then folds under the mattress to allow the walk through to the pantry in the front. Oh right, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. But this could also be used as a stretcher. Right. In an emergency, the we added the few handles. So in an emergency, this is a board to carry somebody on. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. You, you, you don't normally see this at a boat show, so opportune to, to explain something else. You could see that there's shiny part and then oh, like a, yeah. a, a frosted part. Yeah. Okay, so when we, when we built the molds, we specifically did this. We actually gave a frosted surface, which if the boat, hopefully not, but does capsize, that this and the uh, people get out of the escape hatch, hatch yeah. that this is not as slippery. Right. Okay. So they can stand yeah. on it. They could stand on it. Yeah. If they stood on this, uh, the slip. Yeah. 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 What I also do then, I put a jack line all the way around the bottom, past the escape hatch, so as they get out, they can actually hook onto it. That's great. At this moment, the boat is still in the 40 foot stage. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is molded as a 40 foot. Right. We will then cut this part off and add another four feet and that becomes the 440 right. with that extended transfer. Right. Doing that um, from the 40 to the 440, it does take another whole month uh, to actually do that. Um, it is getting them exactly perfect uh, that you do not see the join to make sure that the join is strong enough but all that benefit uh, people might say only four feet of extra fiberglass. It gives you a more comfortable ride. Uh, it is a faster boat, mm -hmm. at, at least by 0.8 to 1 knot faster. Um, you feel safer on board, right. there's more place. It's a nice swimming platform, an easy place to bring the dinghy to, to actually get on and off the boat. Gives you more uh, carrying capacity too. Carrying and capacity also, as well. As Robert told us in the show, when you've got a big dinghy off the back of your boat, having that extra length on the back gives yeah. it support, right? Yeah. So the, the back of the boat doesn't feel like it's yeah. being pushed down from the weight yeah. of the dinghy. So the engine rooms, before we start doing that, you could have a party in there. That's enormous. Yeah. So again here, this boat will have a 40 horsepower Yanma. 40 horsepower. Yeah. yeah. This was the original cockpit, as we designed it originally. We now are able to cut this away, and it will be cut away this week, okay. and a new part of the port cockpit will be added here which adds an extra bed outside oh, okay. and a little uh, another a seat with a table okay. in this area. In the week uh, the helm uh, console was completed uh, it's already nice and shiny and everything pretty here and it's been put on so uh, the helm console is ready to receive uh, the steering cables and things that go through. The boat at the moment is at the three month build stage Okay. She will be uh, launched in August. So some, some of the progress that we did this last week was to complete the, the floors. Uh, the saloon module that you see here is, is still loose. It's just been put in place. Uh, we will next start closing up, uh, putting the uh, starboard water tank uh, under the day bed right. that's standing outside ready to come in. And then I will take you through the boat from the front, what's completed and what's there. Okay.
Okay, so this is the port forward cabin. Okay. That board I showed you that becomes the stretcher. Yeah. Uh, that will be normally here. Right. So that the double uh, mattress folds open and becomes a double bunk. Okay. So that's what that board was. In the front there, we're busy building with the, the storeroom or pantry. Uh, nice storage. Uh, this is something new that we've only put in the past two boats, uh, which is extra locker space at the top above the bunk. Okay. We have had a request to put a, another uh, bunk here and be like a, a double bunk okay. for, for the youngsters. Okay. Yeah. Behind you, this is, this is the port heads. So just for a bit of ex explaining with the modules, this is a module that came out of a mole and I'm standing on another module. They have to be joined. And the next process that we are doing here is we are joining that and removing that that you will not see. You will think this is all one, one product. Okay. Port aft. So this cabinet in the port aft looks very deep, but uh, the black water tank will be in the back. Okay. Um, when you flush the head, it goes through the black water tank straight out. Okay. Um, and then when you do uh, want to use the black water tank, you close the seacock and it will be stored inside. Okay. Both port and starboard bunks are identical, comes out of the same mold. So the bunk is here, we've just covered it with a protection to actually keep uh, the quality there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're in the starboard uh, four peak. The starboard four peak, this is where the generator will go. Uh, maybe also a membrane for the water maker. Uh, inside here, this is the water maker cabinet. Water maker will be installed here. Why here? Because when you work with a water maker and you flush whatever, it's a wet business and you, you can mess into the into the bathtub. Okay. Some little shelves, we're going to have an inboard facing port light. Uh, we haven't done those for a while, but the owners asked for an inboard facing port light. Okay. The day beads over this and below that in this area is where the a starboard water tank goes. Okay, cool. One of the very strongest points in the boat is below the mast step. The mast step is at that level. Okay. And if you think of an eye beam, like we have in the, in the building with an eye, there's an eye. There's the marine pla, marine pla, marine pla, the eye that way, and this way. So one of the strongest, strongest points in the boat. Okay, so Rudy, this boat that we're looking at right now is at the three month part. Yes, three months. And We've got another four to go. It takes seven to months to build. So like you say, you've got the three stages, you've got the mold. Yes, we, we first do the molding. Yep. Then we actually put the boat together, the construction. Construction. And after that, which is about three weeks time, yep. then we will start with the installing the systems. Yeah. Yep. And then the carpentry and all that. So carpentry, motors, electrics. Uh, all, so there's still all, a lot of work to do. Lots. Yeah, but, yeah. but that, that's, the, that's the fun part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's when it comes together and looks like a boat. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Now that concluded the tour of the Maverick Yacht Facilities. Now again, this is a boat that we are seriously considering because it's right in the right price range for Janice and I. Also, go and check out that tour at the Annapolis show where Robert Shearing took us top to bottom with the boat and showed all the features. It was very, very impressive. So yeah, after that, Rudy took me on a bit of a tour of the town. We went up here to Signal Hill where you can see the paragliders sailing over top of Cape Town. It was a very cool perspective. And then after that, he drove me down to the VNA waterfront where I get to see the exquisite yacht that I'm going to be crossing the South Atlantic in for the very first time. That was very cool. I just really want to thank Rudy for all the time he spent with me. And he was a very gracious host. Hey, how are you? I just want to thank you for your generous time to letting me stay at your house, giving me that awesome tour and showing me around Cape Town, driving me around. That was awesome. Was Thanks, pleasure. buddy. Nice Thanks, buddy. Friends are alive now. Next time I see you at the show, we'll definitely chat more. Yeah. Every time I go on his boat, he sits quietly in the back and lets Robert or somebody else do all the talking, but great guy. How are hey. you? Good. How are you doing? This is the owner of the boat I'm about to get on, spent eight weeks with, Sean. So exciting times. Oh, you excited? Yeah. You've, have you been here since when? May 7th? Uh, yeah, we've got a week and a half now. Awesome. You must be excited, eh? Oh, come on, take a look. Yeah, let's go do this. And that's where we'll leave this episode. On the next episode, obviously, we're going to be right on to the Exquisite X5. We're going to get to meet the new crew members I'm going to be crossing in the South Atlantic with. And we'll start to tackle why we aren't leaving in two days like we originally thought we had planned. Yeah, a little bit of story there. Anyways. You can look forward to that in the next episode. Hopefully you found this episode entertaining, informative, or whatever. If so, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so you can follow along the whole South Atlantic Crossing. 
And until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising, and ciao for now. We anchor and hoist the sail.